India, but from across the world. The state has also inherited a rich artistic, architectural, cultural, and spiritual legacy. While several other states in our country have made spectacular progress in the tourism and hospitality sector, Goa continues to be a preferred and chosen destination for many, primarily in view of the attributes I just highlighted. I extend my warm greetings and welcome all the delegates and others to the state of Goa and hope that you will have a wonderful stay here. Tourism and travel-based recreation provides people with a change of scenario and a break from the monotony of daily life. In the process, it brings people from different communities and areas together, affording them <coughs> the opportunity to come in close contact and get acquainted with each other's customs and other aspects of life. However, the contribution of tourism can be nowhere seen more visibly than on the economic front. A study conducted by the United Nations has brought out that developing nations in particular can reap handsome benefits out of tourism as it greatly boosts their national income. Tourism generates employment and therefore adds to the entrepreneurial wealth of a nation. The tourism sector in India, I understand, provides direct and indirect employment to more than 50 million people in our country. And with new investments and further growth, I am confident it will further enhance employment generation, something that is crucial to the growth of our country. Friends, sustainable growth of tourism calls for concerted efforts to build world-class infrastructure and provide excellent services. Focused attention therefore needs to be paid to the creation of high quality infrastructure and systematic organization and availability of all basic services like water supply, power, cleanliness, etc. at all touristically important places. In addition, reliable transportation, proper traffic management, appropriate health facilities, and above all, a peaceful and people-friendly social atmosphere devoid of law and order problems is also a necessity. I do not think I need to remind you that tourists today want seamless connectivity and state-of-the-art facilities coupled with quality services in order to have a comfortable and enjoyable stay and quality experience. The need of the hour is therefore to unveil bold and innovative steps to propel ahead and intelligently tap the emerging opportunities in this crucial sector. However, I would like to express a word of caution that, our, that in our efforts to promote tourism, we should not forget or ignore and in fact be conscious of the social and cultural milieu and more importantly, environmental factors. The tourism and hospitality sector must pay special and particular attention to all environmental issues and make extra efforts to protect and preserve the environment. The incredible India campaign over the past several years has positioned India as a must-visit destination amongst the list of preferred destinations for international travelers. You are aware Government of India has earmarked a massive employment generation exercise in the tourism sector called Hunar Se Rozgar. I am sure all stakeholders of the tourism industry present here will fully support and back this initiative of Ministry of Tourism. While government is making determined efforts to generate employment avenues, I think the private sector and particularly the tourism, hospitality and travel industry should explore creation of viable and sustainable employment opportunities for our educated youth so that the latent energy of our young can be put to best use and we transform them into progressive and forward-looking citizens. The tourism ministry, I understand, and as was mentioned by the minister, has also launched a Clean India campaign to ensure that our country's ancient rich cultural heritage 
is well preserved and protected, not only for intern international and domestic visitors, but for generations to come. The overall vision is to ensure an acceptable level of hygiene and cleanliness at key tourist locations and frequently visited monuments. This is one area where all of us will need to work together in concert and perhaps on a war footing. Friends, I am sure that in the next three days, your deliberations during this convention will not only create an atmosphere of responsible hospitality for the community and also for the environment, but will also generate ideas that will propel tourism in India to greater heights. May I also congratulate the various international associations who have come all the way to Goa to participate in this convention with their executive council members. Ladies and gentlemen, I call upon you that on your departure from here, please take back a little of Goa with you. I am sure you will take time out after the convention to visit the hinterland of Goa. I wish all of you all the very best and fruitful discussions over the coming three days. I would also like to compliment the Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Association of India for having chosen Goa for this convention. I am confident that you will return to your homes with pleasant memories of this beautiful destination and come back to Goa and more importantly for pleasure rather than business. With these words, I have immense pleasure in inaugurating this convention. I wish you success in your deliberations. May our path be blessed. Thank you. Jai Hind. I'd now like to invite once again Sri Anil Kumar, Honorable Minister of Tourism, Government of Kerala, another very, very preferred destination for tourists from both India and across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Sri Anil Kumar. His Excellency, Governor of Goa, Brother Sahabji, Honorable Union Minister for Tourism, Sri Subodkan Sahaiji, Respected President of International Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Association, Respected Sri Vivek Nair, and distinguished dignitaries and dear friends. It is a pleasure to be here today amidst some of the finest minds in our country's tourism sector. As the world's third largest hotel and resorts association representing promoting and developing the hospitality industry in India, FHRI has come a long way. The organization can be proud of the fact that it has played a commendable role in shaping India as a splendid tourist destination. The charm of India is eternal. This land never ceases to captivate. I don't think there is any other place in the world that is as diverse and colorful as ours, not just geographically, but culturally and spiritually as well. And I am delighted to point out that the hotels, resorts, and restaurants across the country have been able to capture and showcase the essence of India to the world. They have created facilities and experiences that have strengthened the incredible India brand. In the last few years, India has grown from strength to strength in the sphere of tourism. It has successfully established itself as a leading destination and its share in world tourist arrivals has increased considerably. However, there is much more that can be done. A major share of the country's rich tourism potential still remains unexplored. I strongly believe that this will be possible only by ensuring the participation of the private sector and by encouraging entrepreneurship with the government playing the role of facilitator. It is indeed a, a timely move on the part of FHRI to focus on employment generation engine of inclusive growth as the theme of this year's convention. Though the tourism industry employs an estimated 53 million people, as you know, there is scope, of, uh, scope for much more. 
However, generating employment, as I see, is just one of the many challenges that India faces today. I think it is time we look at other deeper issues as well, like ensuring the involvement of the local community in tourism and dispersing the tourism activity across the length and breadth of the country. From Kerala's example, I can undoubtedly say that this can bring a sea change in the development of tourism. Making the host population an integral part of every tourism initiative wherever and whenever possible and not restricting the tourism activity to select areas or destinations will not only strengthen tourism but will also generate a lot of goodwill. It is a matter of pride for me that Kerala tourism could play a key role in the growth of our country's tourism setup with its unmatched array of products and experiences. Kerala has, Kerala has succeeded in adding more value to the incredible India experience. This apart, God's own country proved that with the sheer determination and right focus, it is possible to make it begin tourism. As you know, sustainability and responsibility are the key cornerstones of Kerala's growth. The state has set an example for other tourism destinations by ensuring that every step towards development not just sustains nature and the environment but also empowers the local community. I would like to add here that employment generation has played a major role in sustaining tourism development in the state. As a highly labor intensive sector, tourism and its, its support activities have opened up huge employment and career opportunities in the state, especially for low skilled and semi-skilled workers. It is worth noting that it is also ushering in gender equality. Tourism can proudly claim to be one sector that offers equal opportunity for men as well as women. Today, tourism uh, creates 1.2 million jobs in the state and plays a positive role in enhancing lives. Today, we are all set to explore more opportunities and Emerging Kerala will be a key initiative towards it. Identified as one of the key sectors to propel Kerala's future economic growth, tourism will figure high on the agenda when investors from across the continents come together for the three-day summit starting September 12 in Kochi. As you may be, as you may be aware, we recently launched our new tourism policy which seeks to strengthen the state's infrastructure and involve people's participation on a bigger scale. We are committed to creating an atmosphere that will enable potential investors to be long-term partners in growth. I am sure the industry leaders gathered here today will be successful in chalking out a roadmap to generate more employment. Essential, employment essential for the growth of tourism in India, supported by government, initiatives like Honarse, Rosgar Yojana. I am sure we will be able to realize this goal and partner India's vision of increasing its share in international tourist arrivals by the end of the 12th five-year plan. I wish the 47th Convention of FHRI all success. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now invite Shri P. Rajavelu, Honorable Minister for Tourism, Government of Puducherry, to kindly share his thoughts with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Sri P. Rajavedu. Man Bumahe, Matthias Sutla Mitcher, through Subet Kan Saga Relief, Man Bahe Gova Manile, Governor Avergli, Matthias Sutla Sailor, through Kuaja Avergli, Gova Manile, Sutla Sailor, Maria Kurie, Samuel Avergli, the Wattle Matu Munova Hungal Sanga Talever, Maria de Kurie. Kamal Shri Barret Avergli, Tenindia Wotel, Matu Unohunga Sanga Talever, Trike, Siamraj Avergli, 
மரியாதைக்குரிய செயலர் டி நடராஜ் அவர்களே ஓட்டல் உரிமையாளர் மரியாதைக்குரிய விவேக் நாயக் நண்பர்களே மற்றும் இந்த சிறப்பான நிகழ்ச்சிக்கு வந்திருக்கின்ற பத்திரிகை செயலர் மற்றும் ஊடகத்தினுடைய நண்பர்களே அனைவருக்கும் என் மனமார்ந்த பாராட்டுகளும் நன்றியும் தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றேன் ஆனரபிள் மினிஸ்டர் ஃபார் டூரிசம் ஸ்ரீ சுபோத் கான் சஹாய்ஜி இஸ் எக்ஸலன்சி த கவர்னர் ஆஃப் கோவா ஸ்ரீ பாரத் வன்சு செக்ரட்டரி டூரிசம் கோவா மினி ஆனரபிள் மினிஸ்டர் ஃபார் டூரிசம் ஃப்ரம் கேரளா பிரசிடண்ட் ஆஃப் எஃப்ஹெச்ஆர்ஐ ஸ்ரீ கமலேஷ் பாரோட் தி ஆர்கனைசிங் கமிட்டி சேர்மன் Shri Vivek Nayar, Shri Samaraju, Shri Natarajan, media and press persons and colleagues from the hotel industry, a very happy evening to all of you. I am very happy to be here in the Manatil, Virundhambal Matram, Suttula Thoyalai, Membadatthu Nakkutthulum, Arvithilim India, Otalakal Matram, Unovangal, Sangathal, Yerpadun, Sailbattuladhi. I am very happy to be here in the Manatil, Shri Vivek Nayar, Shri Samaraju, பெரிய கருத்தரங்கத்தை கோவா மாநிலத்தை ஏற்பாடு செய்துள்ள திரு கமல்ஸ்ரீ பரோட் அவர்களுக்கு எனது நன்றியை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றேன் அண்மை காலத்து விருந்தம்பல் மற்றும் சுற்றுலா தொழில் மிகப்பெரிய பரிணாமத்தை அடைந்திருப்பதை நாம் அறிவோம் ஐ எம் டிலைட் டு பி ஹியர் ஃபார் த கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் விச் ஷோஸ் தி எஃப்ஐஆர் எஃப்ஹெச்ஏ ஆர்ஐஸ் என்தூசியாசம் அண்ட் கிரேட் கன்சர்ன் ஆஃப் த டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ஹாஸ்பிட்டாலிட்டி அண்ட் டூரிசம் இன் இந்தியா ஐ எம் தேங்க்ஃபுல் டு த பிரசிடென்ட் ஆஃப் எஃப்ஹெச்ஆர்ஐ ஃபார் ஹேவிங் அரேஞ்ச் இஸ் ஃபார்ட்டி செவன்த் annual convention at goa to develop hospitality and tourism in india all of us know that hospitality and tourism have acquired a magnificent dimension in the recent past permukuri and vilavil kandukollum tarinathil kollam pagudhi nan pangeyatta irandavathu tenmanila sutrala amachaga maanattil kalandukondradai ninaivu koorugindren adarkaga tenindiya hotelgal mattum unavangal sanga thalaivar thiru kamal shay barat avargalukku enad nandriye therivithukolgindren சுற்றுலா மற்றும் விருந்தாம்பல் தொழில் முனைவோர்களுக்கு பெருமளவில் பங்கேற்க இது போன்ற கருத்தரங்கத்தை நான் இரண்டாவது முறையாக பங்கேற்கின்றேன் நாடு முழுவதும் இத்தொழில் ஏற்பட்டுள்ள சவால்களையும் மனிதவள பற்றாக்குறையையும் வரி விதிப்பு தொடர்பான கூறுகளை நான் அறிவேன் இச்சூழ்நிலையில் சர்வதேச அளவில் ஏற்பட்டுள்ள பொருளாதார மந்த நிலையை உருவ உருவானதாகும் நாம் உள்நாட்டு சுற்றுலாவில் கூடுதல் கவனம் செலுத்த வேண்டியுள்ளது விருந்தாம்பல் தொழில் முனைவோர் அனைவரும் நான் கேட்டுக்கொள்வது என்னவென்றால் இந்தியாவிற்கு வருகை தரும் சுற்றுலா பயணிகள் அனைத்தும் செலவினத்தை குறைக்க வேண்டும் என்பதோடு அவர்களுக்கு தேவையான கூடுதல் வசதியும் செய்து தர வேண்டும் என்பதை மாண்புமிகு மத்திய சுற்றுலா அமைச்சர் திரு சுபோத் கான் அவர்களை பன்னிரெண்டாவது ஐந்து ஆட்சி திட்டத்தில் சர்வதேச சுற்றுலா பயணிகளின் வருகையை ஒரு சதவீத கூடுதலாக ஈர்ப்பதற்கு உண்டான அனைத்து நடவடிக்கைகளையும் மேற்கொள்ளுமாறு மாநில அரசுகளை வேண்டியுள்ளார் விருந்தோபல் துறையின் பங்களிப்பு இல்லாமல் இச்சாதனையை நாம் நிகழ்த்த முடியாது Uh, in this prestigious con- convention i remember the last conference of tourism ministers at koilon and this is the second conference uh, at which such a high powered group of people are meeting i understand the challenges that we face in the service industry in terms of shortage of hill skilled human resources despite all of the other taxation problems across the country this has been particularly ad- this has to be particularly addressed after the global recession started we still need to pay more attention to increase inbound tourism i would request all the stakeholders of hospitality industry here to consider minimizing the travel cost to india and providing add on facilities to tourists let us work together with the state governments uh, for what the honorable union minister of tourism has said to achieve 1% of global tourist arrivals to india in the 12th plan this cannot happen without the contribution of the hospitality industry puducherry union pradeshathil ஆண்டு சுற்றுலா பயணிகள் வருகை ஆறு சதவீதமாக உயர்ந்துள்ளது கடந்த பத்து ஆண்டுகளாக விளம்பரப்படுத்தப்பட்டு வரும் பெசிபிக் பாண்டிச்சேரி கிவ் டைம் ஏ பிரேக் என்ற வாசகம் நல்ல தாக்குதலை விளைவுகளை ஏற்படுத்தியதோடு தனியார் முன்னேற்றங்களையும் சுற்றுலா பயணிகளையும் ஈர்த்துள்ளது ஓட்டல்களில் இரண்டு ரெண்டாயிரம் ஆண்டில் ஆயிரமாக இருந்த அறைகளின் எண்ணிக்கை ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பன்னிரெண்டு நான்காயிரம் அறைகளாக உயர்த்துள்ளது மேலும் இரண்டாயிரமாவது ஆண்டில் ஐந்து லட்சமாக இருந்த சுற்றுலா பயணிகள் வருகை ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பன்னெண்டாம் ஆண்டில் பன்னெண்டு லட்சமாக உயர்ந்துள்ளது ஆண்டின் சராசரி அறைகளின் பதிவு எழுபது சதவீதமாக இருந்து வருகிறது புதுச்சேரி மாநில கிழக்கு கடற்கரை பகுதியில் அமைந்துள்ள ஒரு அழகிய யூனியன் பிரதேசமாகும் பிரெஞ்சு மற்றும் தமிழ் கட்டிடக்கலையும் பிரதிபலிக்கும் பாரம்பரிய கட்டிடங்கள் ஆன்மீக அனுபவம் பெறும் வகையும் 
அரவிந்தர் ஆசிரமம் அழகிய கடற்கரை சர்வதேச நகரமான ஆரோவில் வரலாற்று புகழ் வாய்ந்த ஆலயங்கள் ஆற்றுக்குழுமங்கள் பகுதிகள் போன்றவற்றை உள்ளடக்கிய பகுதியாக விளங்குகிறது புதுச்சேரியில் உள்ள உலக புகழ் வாய்ந்த கவிஞர் பாரதியார் பாரதிதாசன் அருங்காட்சியம் மற்றும் மணிமண்டபம் பிரான்ஸ் நாட்டு தொடர்புள்ள பிரெஞ்சு கலாச்சாரம் உணவு மற்றும் பாரம்பரியம் கலந்து கலவையாக புதுச்சேரி விளங்குகிறது பன்னாட்டு உணவு வகையிலும் கிடைக்கும் இடமாக திகழ்கிறது The Union Territory of Pondicherry has witnessed a steady annual growth of 6% in tourism uh, arrivals. The ad line, Peaceful Pondicherry, Give Time a Break, undertaken in the last 10 years has yielded enough results by drawing private investment and inflow of tourists. Hotel rooms increased from just 1,000 in the year 2000 to 4,000 in, in 2012, and tourist arrivals have increased from 5 lakhs to 12 lakhs in the same time. The average occupancy of hotel rooms is 60% per year. Pondicherry is a calm and beautiful city uh, on the east coast with rich heritage buildings and monuments depicting French and Tamil architecture, the Aurobindo ashram for spiritual experiences, a, city, a beautiful beach promenade, an international city, Auroville, historic temples, backwaters, the museums to the national poet Bharati and the state poet uh, Bharati Dasan are the abandoned potentials of the state. The influence of French emanates everywhere in Pondicherry in terms of culture and cuisine, and it seems to be a mosaic of varied international cultures.